Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Um, like I said yesterday, I was going to try to do a what's sold, but things were just kind of crazy. I have a regular job going uh, today, but I'm off for the rest of the week. Um, and so I'll probably do a what's sold tomorrow. And um, the... Uh, let me see here. Uh, so what we have today is just what I recently purchased. Um, I think this is all from Goodwill. It's all Goodwill stuff. Nothing from the flea. I think everything from the flea market already listed and is up and going. I'm pretty sure. Um, one sale, and I have another one of these too. So one sale. This sold within about 30, 20 or thirty minutes of me posting it. I'm gonna get down here really quick because I have another one of these that needs to get listed. These ergonomic keyboards. I posted one that I bought for five dollars. This one I got for that's in a bundle, so maybe like two or three bucks for this one. But I got one for five bucks without the box, without any accessories, sold in about 20 minutes after listing it, and it sold for forty-one dollars. So five bucks into forty-one. Those keyboards are still hot, still great keyboards to look out for. They're the uh what is that? The Microsoft Ergonomic. 4,000 keyboard keep your eye out for them you know if you get them for under 10 bucks they still go for about $40 this one here because it has the box it has some accessories with it I'll probably list that one more towards 50 maybe 55 and see where that one goes but those keyboards are a great sale um sent them off about uh over the weekend I think it was like 26 or 27 sales so that's about average for this year over the weekend what I'm doing, I'm trying to get the, my numbers up, trying to get my sales up. Uh, more sales volume. My average sale price is right around 40 bucks. Um, hovers around like, you know, 38 and 40. And it just kind of goes up and down a little bit. But I'm trying to get my, um, uh, trying to get overall volume up in sales, daily sales. So um, we're up to about 10 sales today that I have to call tomorrow. What am I at? Uh, I know one person hasn't paid yet, but um, I don't expect them to pay because someone in England bought it, and usually people overseas, they buy something, and they, for some reason, they don't see the shipping cost ahead of time, and um, they see it after the fact, and they just don't pay. They go silent. So, yeah, about 10 sales. Um, one person bought two little pillows, so uh those that go out i should get that video in the morning because like i said i'll have plenty of time in the morning got some good little 20 25 dollar sales going out um but uh so what we have here is a goodwill purchase uh over a couple of goodwill trips i mean this isn't this wasn't only one trip uh the items are one only one trip um but uh let's just go over this really quick here uh, Legos, you know me. I'm always buying Legos. I'm a Lego buyer. Almost. <laughs> Doesn't care what price it is. This one I'm probably going to keep, but I already have one listed. It's like 10 bucks or so. So if you get it for $2 or less, it's pretty good. And it'll sell pretty quickly. It's a Lego set. Still a motorcycle dude. It has a minifigure and an ex and a, and a uh, accessory. So that's usually pretty good. Um, Legos usually no-brainers. The other ones to look out for... Um, Again, I bought a bunch of toys, more toys, and here's some ones I want to highlight. These Bakugan, uh, I remember these when I was younger, but I wasn't younger to wanted to have bought these when I was a kid. But these are this is a newer, a newer piece that just you know recently came out. I'm not sure what year. Uh, not sure what year. I don't think it has a year on it. But either way. The, one of the good ones I go to, they price things fairly, I wouldn't say cheap, but they price them to move and get them out the door. So little things like this, like little tiny Lego sets, they usually price around $2. So, uh, but these Bakugans though, this one here, 20 to 25 bucks for this guy. So $2 in the 2025. It's, you know, the, a little bit of box damage, but this isn't something, I mean... In my opinion, this isn't something like a collectible piece, so someone's going to buy this to open it and play with it or give it as a gift to a kid. And, um, you know, you'll make about 20 bucks on that, so... And only a $2 buy-in. That's not bad. Not bad at all. I like those sales where I don't really have to think about it. I can just picture it, 
scan the barcode. You can get easily easily get comps on that. Take some quick pictures, file it away. It's done. Um, another good one, and I have sold some other ones. Not this guy specifically, but other Avatar toys. Uh, this goes for about um, fifteen to twenty dollars, so a little bit less than the Bakugan, but nonetheless, it's uh, five dollars twenty-five cents, and you know, into fifteen to twenty dollars. So these Avatar characters, I think these are McFarlane. Are they McFarlane? Uh, yeah, they are. They are McFarlane toys. So McFarlane is a bit of a premium brand. You definitely want to look out for McFarlane. The ones that I find... Here it is up here, McFarlane toys. The ones that I find that aren't really worth too much, but they're priced up pretty high, are the McFarlane um, spawn characters. If you find them, they are worth it, but you got to get them for a few bucks. Uh, I was just on a Goodwill recently, and they had them priced at like $16 a figure. And they only go for about $16, maybe $20, brand new in the package. The spawn figures aren't really that valuable, but some of the other McFarlane stuff is pretty good. The other McFarlane stuff that isn't really great is like the sports guy, you know, the, the you know, kind of like the starting lineups that they do McFarlane stuff. Um, they aren't that great. I mean, if you get some popular players and you get them for a low price, most, most items are, you know, like great sellers if you buy them for the right price that's that's the whole you know the whole name of the game you know is your buy-in cost that's like i've talked about it in another video it's very important your buy-in cost for each item um and if you get it low enough i mean everything's sellable i i mostly everything sell i should say mostly everything's sellable if you can buy it for the right price you know and you make a good profit on it um like these, these Bakugans, I mean, if these were priced up to about $10, which at some Goodwills, I've seen them priced up close to $8 to $9. I would think twice about buying this. Um, still pretty consistent around 20 to 25 so I still might be a buyer at around 8 or 9 But I'd much rather pay the $2 um, and make the 20 25 bucks on that on that figure. But a lot of stuff is just, it's good sellers. And, you know, I go through Gunwheels a lot, all the time, practically almost daily, um, flea markets, everything, it would be great to sell. Like, I can fill my cart with tons of stuff. <clears throat> it's just the cost that it, you know, the cost of the item that holds me back from buying as much as I want. And it should hold you back, too, because you can't overpay for items. Um, when you're on, when you're selling on eBay, I... Other platforms I'm not really familiar with because I don't sell on other platforms. Um, I did sell on Etsy for a while, but um, I don't anymore. And, but just on eBay, I mean, people are looking for a deal. Everyone's looking for a deal out there. And that's one reason why people go online. Um, that's why you shop on Amazon. That's why people, you know, wait for sale, wait for Prime Day sales. And you know, I know Prime Day is coming up. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Um, I'm always surfing a website called Slick Deals. Look out on Slick Deals. They have crazy discounts you'll find sometimes on items that maybe you've been sitting there waiting on. Or maybe you don't even know you want that item. <laughs> and you'll see it on Slick Deals for like 50, 60, 70% off. Check out Slick Deals. They have great... Um, they pretty much just, you know, it's, it's just a place that... I guess they scour the web or people will send in their, uh, you know, deals that they see on the web somewhere at different websites... And they send into that one website, Slick Deals, and it'll all be in one spot, all categorized and everything. And I'll tell you what, I got some amazing deals. Not, I mean, I love shoes, um, and I find some great deals on shoes just by looking at Slick Deals. A lot of the brand new shoes I buy, I mean, I get them at a discount. I don't like paying full retail for anything. I don't think it's worth it. Um, to pay full retail for a lot of stuff that's out there. I mean, I understand that a lot of these companies, you know, they have employees and everybody's got to get paid down the line. But, you know, I just, I, I just don't like paying full retail for things. So I'm always looking for a deal. I'm always at Goodwill. Shop at Goodwill. Look for deals, everybody. Because um, you're not just, you know, you're reselling. But I think as you're reselling, you're learning, like, what, you know, what the actual worth uh, items have you know you go buy a t-shirt uh, you know you go you think you buy a high-end like Banana Republic t-shirt 
you know, costs you 40, 50 bucks at the store. But then let's say you find that t-shirt at the Goodwill and you try to resell it. You're probably only get like five or 10 bucks for that t-shirt. You know, there's, you realize very quickly the value of these items. When you're reselling items, you'll, you'll just know, you'll be like, shoot, that thing's not worth it. I'm not going to pay, you know, 20 or 30 bucks for that at the store when I know I can pick it up online for this price or pick it up at the Goodwill for this price or, uh, you know, I'm actually going to see it, you know, at the flea market, whatever. So, and don't hesitate. Shop at Goodwill. Look for deals. You know, everything helps. Not only just, you know, reselling items, but not paying full, full retail for items, too. That'll help you in the long run as well. Um... The rest of the items here on this table, I'm not sure if I showed that camera, but actually I've charged up the battery, so I might show you it working. Um, but I think I might show this in the video. 1149 of this camera, it was sitting on the shelves, Canon camera. I looked it up, it goes for about $60, so. I think I already showed that though, so I'm not gonna too much into that. Something that's kind of funny, I just purchased a Dremel, um, brand new Dremel, and I found this brand new Dremel kit, just a little accessory kit. And the cool thing about this, well, I mean, not so cool, but some of this, some of this stuff looks like it's deteriorating in there. But it is brand new. It is a 162 piece kit, got it for 10 bucks. So a little bit on the higher end there. But uh, there was only one sold that I could find for $25. And there's none listed right now. So I might try to price this about 40 bucks and see if I can get something higher than $25. My buying cost right there, ten dollars oh ten dollars and nine cents. So even at twenty dollars, it's still pretty not bad. Um, but I would like to make a little bit more on this set. And it's kind of funny because I just bought a whole brand new Dremel kit with the Dremel and everything. So we'll see how that does. Uh, I should I, I want to feature that in a in a what sold video, hopefully, because this is something. It's kind of in a unique scenario. Like I you know I may or may not have mentioned this before. If you find something, an item, and it has solds, but none listed, you're kind of in a great position to maybe make a little bit more profit on that item. Because it's obviously desirable because people are buying it, but it can't, you know, people can't keep it in stock on eBay in order to fulfill whatever the demand is for that product. So there may be demand for this product, and, it, it, you know, there's only one sold already, so we'll see how that goes and um I'll, I'm, I'm gonna make a note to make sure to share that with you guys to see what it ultimately goes for another thing now this thing i just kind of picked it up i did look up comps on it and i quickly picked it up it was coming out on a cart just by picking it up and you know, it's coffee i just kind of had this assumption that it would be worth something and so as i was walking around i did a look up on it just looked up this simpresso and sure enough, it goes for thirty to thirty to thirty-five dollars. I even sold the silk comp for forty-five, so I might, I might put this at forty bucks and see what happens. But just a little, you know, one of those press coffee machines or coffee makers, it's not a machine. Okay, a handle. I know some of the ones that I've seen have the where you put the coffee and then you press it down. And this one looks a little bit looks better because it looks like it has some sort of a you know apparatus to help press it down. Looks a bit squash. I might open it, just take a look at it, and make sure it's all good. Oh, this might use K cups or something as well too. That's kind of interesting. I didn't even really pay attention to that, but cool little device. And you know, hopefully about forty dollars on that guy. Um, I know I did the American Girl doll already. Now, these things here, I've sold this brand before, and it is a good brand to look out for. Again, for the right price. I'm probably going to lot all this together and sell it for, I believe I can probably get about $40 for this whole set. And it's a home co, so definitely look out for home co, it's vintage, it's plastic, so it's mid-century modern, it's got a mid-century modern, I've sold some, they're like mirrors I think, and those are like hotel, what, what's called a style called hotel hotel regency and kind of hard for me to explain you just kind of have to see it but it's very kind of art deco-y mid-century 
um, flashy, like gold, silver, lots of filigree would be something that would be considered hotel regency. This is more mid-century. It looks like wood, but it's plastic. Homeco, Homeco is the brand you wanna look out for, made in USA. Um, again, you gotta get it for the right price. These reach $4.69 a piece. And they got a very, to me, in my opinion, it's got like a, like a uh, TV show Three's Company feel to them. Uh, Three's Company was my favorite growing up. I don't even think these have even been used. I don't think anybody's put any candles in these. They probably were just sitting around as a decor. But I'm going to list these for 40 bucks for the whole set. And I think they should go pretty quickly. My last home code stuff went within about a few days, so... I don't see it often, but we usually do pick it up for if it's the right price for us. And we'll you know, snag that. Definitely something to look out for is Homeco. We grab a couple more things I want to show you guys before we end this video. The other thing I want to tell you guys here before I get into these couple of products, few products. Also, too, look out for electronics. Look for stuff that you can use in your business. I found this iPad at the Goodwill. And I actually found it, it's, it works, fully working iPad, more modern, I mean, it's, it's a little bit, it's a, a year old, but I use it for my whatnot shows, um, I use it to help me list, and I got this little keyboard thing for it, so it's like a little laptop, um, I found this at the Goodwill, and I actually found it on a, um, on a sale day, so I ended up getting it for around $70? and it resells for close to $200 so look out at the Goodwills for things that you can actually use in your business as well too and that has come in handy for on many occasions so keep your eye out um, definitely want to try to test them if you can I did was able to test that and be cautious with Apple products because sometimes they can be uh, people can have them um, not uh, secure, you know, security lock on them, or the um, password locked. And if you can't get past the password, with most Apple products, you know, it's pretty much sold as parts. So uh, if it does have a, a screen lock on it and no password, be careful. Just don't. I wouldn't even get involved in it. Um, some phones could automatically, or I mean, I think all Apple products can be. Uh, locked down in iTunes and then good luck trying to get that unlocked by anybody so uh, but I do have success in buying Apple products that are locked or password locked um, like at the flea market because I can get them really cheap and usually they'll you know the vendors there will know they'll be like all right you know they are aware that some Apple products are just going to be unusable so they just sell them really cheap just to move them and I'll usually sell them as parts, you know, 10 to 15 bucks for stuff that's previously locked. And, um, you know, then people can strip them down and use parts and parts and stuff on them. But I did buy some golfing stuff, which I really don't do at all. I don't buy golfing equipment because I don't find anything very good. Um, and golfing stuff is priced very well in our area um i'm always on the lookout for i always scan through the the golf clubs and golfing equipment um i have bought golf balls before and resold those uh especially if they're brand new in the package that's the best in my opinion you know if you get them for like a buck or two you can sell them for 10 15 dollars if it's a good brand and i usually go through the golf clubs i don't want to really really like to get involved with golf bags but in the um, uh, golf club section, it's usually just, you know, no-name brands, Wilson, Dunlop. Uh, but they're all priced around $4, 4 to $5 at our Goodwills. All the golf clubs. But I never find any good brands. This time, I found a good brand. And I found the golf trainer, too. Which, golf trainers can be pretty, pretty um, pricey. And this one here, you'll notice it is crooked and i did have to you know i kind of inspected it to make sure it wasn't you know purposely bent or if it was it was made it was bent at the factory then i did a quick look up of the company you know the price four dollars and 19 cents on that guy 
and this has like a little grip on the thing so that way you can hold your so that way it trains you to hold your golf club in the proper position i am not a golfer and tell you the truth i don't like golf i really don't see the point of golf <laughs> i played baseball growing up my whole life and so um i don't know we just me and my friends we never <laughs> always had this hatred for golfers or people that golf and never really never got into golf so uh but i, I know what to look out for uh, i do have a lot of uh i do have people in my family that are avid golfers and i do know what to look out for and you definitely want to look out for this matt z's assist goes for about 60 dollars online i've seen comps for around 65 see them as low as 55 so Right about 60 bucks. And that's $4.19. The hardest thing about golf clubs is the length. You know, this is pretty long. So I'm going to need to... Um, I have boxes for this. So you will need to make sure you have boxes to ship this out. Uh, and the ship... Just the size of it. Well, the weight isn't really like crazy. It's the size that's going to get the buyer uh, that high shipping cost. So... And, you know, they may not be buying from you if the shipping cost is too high. But this is a trainer. Trainers, you know, they sell and they sell pretty regularly. So keep your eye out for golfing trainers. Now, although I'm not familiar with different brands, I have to look them up. Now, the golf club brand that I did find, and I ended up picking up the whole, all of my saw there, were a set of ping. Well, it wasn't a set. It was just several ping irons ping i'm not like super knowledgeable about golf clubs and uh you know i i know the brands i know brands to look out for um definitely want to look out for what is scotty cameron golf clubs uh anything scotty cameron it's gonna be like 100 200 if i'm putters or drivers four or five hundred dollars so uh, as you can see four dollars 19 cents that's what they're priced at at almost all my goodwills here in my area four dollars 90 cents a golf club and these golf clubs i picked up eight of them and they go for 30 to 40 bucks for these each of these irons they're all irons uh if i had putters putters would probably go for more and driver drivers and putters uh tend to go for more uh but i tend to um uh, but i tend to stay away from irons if i am buying golf clubs uh, just because they're not as valuable as other ones, but this brand Ping, I looked it up really quick, 30 40 bucks. If you see Ping, tailor made, um, there's other, I mean, if you go online, you'll see people that buy golf clubs and people that review golf clubs. Uh, definitely try to get knowledgeable about them, uh, because they do, I mean, it's a sport where it's a leisure sport, I mean, professional sport too, but people that have disposable income are usually involved in golf and they're willing to pay up for golf clubs so and i live in california where golfing season is pretty much year round so uh, i'm pretty sure this, these should sell pretty quickly if i price them right um also like i said i need to get the shipping right you know you gotta get these long boxes um what is that about 30 probably like about 36 inches uh longer than my yardstick over there so it's probably gonna be like a 40 inch 40 inch box or so um it's not gonna be very like a, it's not gonna be like a big box it's gonna be a really long box so and that's where the shipping is gonna get you there so hopefully with these new shipping rules they'll uh oh yeah i shipped out a bunch of stuff with the new ebay thing i'm uh, not new ebay thing new ups thing which is that you ground advantage and kind of seamless because everything that sold over the weekend that was uh, first class automatically just transitioned over to that. So a piece of cake and the price seemed to be about the same, maybe a little bit less. Definitely a little bit less on those one to two pound, uh, two pound items. Um, but as far as like the first class stuff, it seemed to be right on point. But um, we'll see. There's some issues I think it said with uh, something with scanning the QR code. So I wasn't too sure about. I don't know about. I don't know if the USPS does QR codes. You know, everyone talks about this uh, scanning your packages in, scanning your packages in. You gotta scan them in. 
Uh, make sure when your guy gets there to pick him up, scan him in. I've never had any trouble with that, you know, and I'm going to knock on wood, knock on something right now, but uh, my postal, I take them directly to the post office, and those guys are great. Those guys are great there at that post office. At my post office, I just stack them all on the counter. Every po I've been to different post offices, and everybody does it a little bit differently, but my local, my local post office, um, you stack all your packages on the counter, and usually somebody that comes in, sorts them right behind and um boom they're gone and they go my packages get there quick sometimes they make it all the way to florida in two to three days it's amazing i don't know how they keep track of all this stuff um last item is a golfing item it's a mini golfing bag it's not a kid's golfing maybe it might be like a like a child's golf like a little child's golfing bag but tiny golfing bag it's well made it's a nice well-made bag it's got like a a little uh, shoulder harness accessory here, handle. It's got all the usual pockets that you see on the bigger sizes. It's got the stand back here as well. Brand called Lynx. I wasn't familiar with it because I don't do golf bags. But this is a smaller golf bag, so I didn't mind getting involved with it. And it goes for about 40 bucks. And this bag costs 7 dollars So that should be a good seller right there. But those are some items, a uh, few unique stuff that, you know, golf I don't usually ever pick up because I never find anything good. Um, this espresso thing was kind of amazing and definitely recommend it. It's a bolo if you see it out there. Simpresso and Bakugans, Bakugans, you know, they've been selling out for me pretty steady. Excuse me, been selling out for me pretty steadily. So do look out for that. Um, if you find them used, try to get like a all bunch of them. Like you go to a garage sale, you see, you know, some kids' toys that they're selling, a big old, you know, big old lot. Try to get them, you know, really cheap and a big old bundle. And you can lock these up and sell them pretty, for pretty good profit on those. Um, Dremel stuff seems to, do, to be pretty good. Um, this is my first uh, dive into Dremel. And so I'll see. I'll see how it goes. And Avatar, Avatar toys. If you see them out there at Goodwills, they are appearing there. You know, 15 and 20 bucks. I sold some um, Avatar, the flying creatures, uh, new in the box. Those went for 30 bucks a piece. And I picked them up for probably about, right about the same price as that guy. But that's all I have to show you guys for today. This guy may be blocking the whole view. Let's move that out of the way. Um, that's what I have for you guys today. What I purchased and what you can expect to get for items. That's what I pay for items in my area. I mean, I see people online getting stuff for cheaper than I do. And... Too hectic, and people are just throwing stuff, throwing stuff, throwing stuff into your cart, you know, just trying to get as much as you can um, quickly. And I, you can't really go through items individually. Not like at a regular Goodwill, but I keep forgetting to take my camera. I keep, I'm not used to, I'm not in a habit of taking my camera when I'm going out to the flea market, when I'm going out to Goodwills, but um, I'll be hitting up a few Goodwills here and probably go to the flea market on Thursday. Maybe Wednesday and Friday I'll go to the flea market because the flea markets are big on Thursdays and Sundays here, but Wednesdays and Saturdays are, you know, they don't, it's not that they're, they don't have the same space, just less vendors go out on those days. And I'm assuming the vendors are out getting more stuff so they can sell on those days. But Thursdays are big, Sundays are big, but I'll tell you what, on the slow days, like Wednesdays and Fridays, where it only costs 50 cents to get in, you can find some pretty good, I mean, I found some purses that went for over you know, 120, $130. Um, I think I sold a Disney purse that I got for 10 bucks for $80. Um, there's some good stuff to find when there's less uh, less vendors to go through. As opposed to like the large one where you have to go through everything. It's kind of, plus it's kind of tiring when you're walking through a giant flea market. And our flea market, our flea market over here on Sundays is just massive. It is unbelievable how massive the flea market is on Sundays one of these days I'll take you guys through a flea market I might be on the chuck double check I think earlier in the channel I threw up a flea market video that I had done 
a long time ago before I committed to really doing a lot of videos, but um, I'll double check. But if you look back at my history, there might be one uh, about last year or so where we did a, um, a flea market walkthrough. It was during the winter. But um, either way, thank you guys for watching. Comment down below. Thumbs up if you guys liked it. Let me know what your guys' prices are out there, where you're at. But uh, catch you guys next time.